you know, when you're driving a faster brain, when you're driving a Lamborghini, you better know how to drive it. And you better have the ability to stop on a dime when shit comes up or whatever. I eliminate as much choice out of my life as possible to prevent things from happening. On this week's episode, Nick checks in with leveraged client Peter Shankman, public relations master, best-selling author, and host of the number one ADHD podcast, Faster Than Normal. Listen in as Peter chats about his productivity hacks he uses to operate his faster than normal brain. Thank you so much for joining us today, Peter. Thank you for having me. Good to be here. So, I mean, t- I'm, I, I have so many questions for you. How did you get to be the normal? Like, you know, how did you grow up? How did you start Hero? I mean, give me, give me like the, the, the short spiel. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to be doing any of this. I was in grad school studying fashion and portrait photography because it was a great way to meet women. Um, in the, <laughs> in the uh, early 90s, with, with 18 credits left in my graduate degree, I lost my financial aid. And the government sent me a letter that said, your parents make too much money. We're taking away your financial aid. And I sent the government back a letter that said, they do make too much money, but, you know, they keep it. And the government didn't find that funny. And so I moved back to New York, uh, where I was born and raised. I'm a New York City public school kid. And um, I was hanging out in an AOL chat room, uh, America Online, Melrose Place TV gossip chat room. And uh, someone in that chat room said, you know, my company's trying to build a newsroom. You have a journalism degree. Why don't you submit your resume? I said, sure, I have no experience. That'll be great. Two weeks later, I was being moved down to Virginia to become one of the founding editors of America Online and help launch AOL News. And it was it was literally one of those things where you're just like, OK, I uh, I lied about how I lied that I had any skills whatsoever. I'm here now. I can't really leave. So I better learn what to do really fast and, you know, put my journalism degree to work <clears throat> immediately. And myself and about three other people, we, we built this newsroom and we, we turned it into the largest online newsroom, a digital online newsroom in the world for several years. Um, it was an amazing, truly an amazing experience. It was one of the best times of my life. Um, uh, I learned so much from Steve Case. I learned about customer service. I learned about uh, reaching and understanding your audience. Um, it was amazing. I moved back to New York in 98 after leaving AOL and um, figured I could start a PR firm. I knew more about public relations and the dot-com boom that was quickly approaching. And it was, um, but I had no money. And uh, I was diagnosed with ADHD, not until my, late, my mid-30s, but as a kid, it was just like, you're being stupid again, stop it, disease. And um you know, or you're doing something dumb, or that's not a good idea, or why do you do this stuff? And um, I had this brilliant idea that the easiest way to make money would be to take my rent money and um, <laughs> try to make more of it. So I took my rent money in my for my studio apartment, and there was a movie coming out on video called Titanic at the time. And I had 500 t-shirts printed up that read, it sank, get over it. And I figured if I can get going to Times Square, and sell 180 shirts, I'd make my money back. I figured it would take a week to sell 180 shirts. I sold 500 shirts in six hours. Um, I made five grand. I, I, I came home, I, I threw it up in the air. I called a reporter I knew at USA Today. I said, I just did something really funny. She said, that's hysterical. Are you selling the shirts online? I went, of course I am. That's why I called you and built the worst website known to man. The story broke the next morning on the front page of USA Today. I found this out because my phone rang at 5.30 in the morning and it was my hosting provider asking if I'd started advertising because um, uh, I was crashing their servers and I had no idea why. And in just under two months, I sold 10,000 shirts on the web, cleared about 100 grand, started my PR firm. Um, it was ridiculous. It was, you know, it, but, but my whole life, and I didn't, again, I didn't realize this until probably 20 years later when I, when I learned what ADHD was, um, my whole life, it's, it's been... Um, try it, see what happens, somehow make it work. Um, to put it another way, I have two speeds and I only have two speeds and those two speeds are namaste and I'll cut a bitch and there's no middle ground there. And so, you know, while that's gotten me in trouble, I've learned how to use it to my advantage uh, uh, a lot. And, you know, everything I've done, whether it's starting help a reporter out uh, and in three years, literally fundamentally changing how journalists and sources find each other and then selling that to Vocus, now now Business Wire. Um, you know, whether it was that, whether it was um, uh, launching Faster Than Normal, which is the podcast uh, that focuses on ADHD as a gift, not a curse. And we're coming up on our 100th episode next week. Uh, we've had Tony Robbins and Seth Godin, and and, and I'm seeking these people out. I've written a best-selling book on it. I've written five books. My latest is a best-selling yeah, book. Yeah, called- Sonnenberg now as of yesterday. 
yes, and <laughs> and you you'll be on next month. Yeah, and, you know, at the end of the day, I just I like to do things that help the world. I like to make the world better. Um, I've had a little bit of success, and I th think it's kind of responsible to send the send the elevator back down. Um, and then the last thing I do is I launched a mastermind group of about 175 people in it called Shank Minds. And when I sold Harrow, um, two things happened. I got a bunch of invitations to join these hundred thousand dollar a year masterminds that I had no desire to join. And the second thing was I realized that during the all the good times of running Harrow, it was awesome. And during all the bad times, I had no one to talk to. And I realized that I desperately needed a tribe. And we all do. If our entre entrepreneurship is awesome, but it's also lonely as hell. And I'm like, I got to change this. And so I built uh, a mastermind group. We're digital. We're on. We're ninety percent online, and we have like two or three events a year. We have an event coming up in June. It's called Shank Minds, and I decided to do it at a price point that entrepreneurs just starting out could also afford. So I charge 89 bucks a month because my premise is, you know, you need, I, I want to see people, good people coming together to help good people. And that's sort of my thing. So, yeah, I mean, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm very lucky. I'm very fortunate. Um, I'm a single dad to a five-year-old kid who's just, she's, she's just awesome. Um, and uh, in my spare time, I, I fall out of airplanes. I'm a licensed skydiver. Um, I, I am. I remember when I, when I interviewed you last. Uh, I think yeah. you were saying that um, if the chute didn't open, you would put one of your shoes in the parachute. Just exactly. To if if it didn't open, I'd take one of my shoes off and I'd put it down my jumpsuit. It wouldn't save my life, but it would confuse the fuck out of whoever found me. Yeah, like, like just be, what an awesome way to go. Yeah. Um, How but yeah. The fuck did that happen. <laughs> That's my premise. You know, so so I, I skydive. I run marathons. I run Ironman triathlons. I am a a a, a very much uh, one hundred percent addicted to a Peloton junkie, and I am a. I'm pretty damn lucky. I'm having a good time. And you're very disciplined. I mean, we we caught up for coffee the other um, last month, and you were just you were coming off of how many day fast were you on? Uh, that was an eight day fast. Yeah, I um, well yeah. again, but it, that goes. It's not so much. In a perfect world, I wouldn't have to be disciplined, right? But again, I don't have a middle ground. I have two speeds. I have you know, there are people who can order a pizza at night and have two slices one, and, and have one slice in the yeah. fridge. Yeah, you'll just that's called leftover pizza. Your face in the box. I've never had leftover pizza in my life. It's just not a thing. <laughs> so you yeah. know, for, for me, it's it's much easier to have an all or nothing. And and fa intermittent fasting is awesome because I, I don't have to think about it. It's like, huh, I'm hungry. What time is it? Your my watch says you're currently fasting. Okay, can't eat. That's yeah, it. I I've been told that I'm I have like a slight OCD or a, a bit uh, of obsessive uh, tendencies, especially like when I. For, for, for things that I start getting into, I can really get into it. I wonder if there's a correlation between ADD and obsessiveness. There's no Maybe. question. No question there is. Um, yeah. It's literally like a half a molecule away. There's, there's a, uh, you know, a very strong, um, it's the same reason that when, when we focus on something that we really want to do, we can focus on it for 14 hours in, in deep work. Cal, Cal Norris wrote a book called Deep Work, and that's his basic premise. I wrote my last three books entirely on airplanes. Um, because that's where I'm, my happy place is for work. I can get on my, I can get on a plane. Like I actually booked a flight to Tokyo to write a book, not because I had to go to Tokyo, just because I needed 14 hours in each direction. I wrote chapters one through five on the flight out, went to the lounge, took a shower, got back on the same plane, same seat two hours later, <laughs> wrote chapters six through 10, and came home with a best selling book called Zombie Loyalists uh, using great service, great rabbit fans. And people think I'm insane, but dude, you spent six thousand dollars to go nowhere. No, I spent six thousand dollars to have thirty-one hours of uninterrupted time to write a book. It's not crazy; mm -hmm. it works. I mean, look, every like you, the the thing that I always tell people is you have to figure mm -hmm. out like what, like how you optimize your time and what works for you. You know, whether that's you know booking round trip flight just to write a book, or knowing that your brain is fresher in the morning after a workout, and then you know, dedicating that morning to your deep work and then, you know, doing less important stuff later in the day. But you have to figure out what works for you and then, and then, you know, work around I sleep that. sleep in my gym clothes because I am very good at talking myself out of anything. And so when my alarm goes off around 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. and I know I have an hour and a half of biking to do, I also have my internet of things. My lights start coming up. My curtains start going up. So within five minutes, I'm up and I'm in my gym clothes. It's hard to go back to sleep when you're awake and in your gym clothes already. And the lights are on. You know, you I set up these things to to allow me to live the best life I can. And it again, some people are like, "What's wrong with you?" And I'm like, "You know what? You do you. This works for me. You do you." Yeah, do you have the Philips uh, you uh, wake up? Sylvania um, and uh, all connected with smart things. And then of course everything talks to Alexa, and it's yeah, I love it. Yeah, 
Yeah, so it just like automatically starts yeah. slowly, uh, like like mimicking the, the course the, of ten the minutes. Sunrising. And you know, as soon as I hear the curtains, the, my 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 blinds start to go up. I'm awake, and but it's great because I know like yeah. <clears throat> I'll sign up for you know the Peloton is a great thing. When I, I'm when I have my daughter, I can't go out and run her bike, so I'll just sign up for a four a.m. class, a five a.m. class, <clears throat> and I'll know that if I'm not on the bike by four a.m., I'm not in that class. So there's your answer at three fifty four. I roll out of bed. I, I throw water on my face. Put on the bike shoes and I'm on the bike and it's done. I did it this morning. Had a great ride. You know, it's it's. And I, it's the funny thing is, I have friends, a lot of people who's in my life who are very close to. Oh, I wish I had the ability to do that. Yours, yeah. I'm like, well, you 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 do, um, because you know, I'm pretty sure where you live and where I live. I mean, I live a mile from you, and the Earth rotates around the Sun at the same exact speed. So it's not like I have more or less time than you do, or you have more or less time than I do. It's just we choose different things to be priorities. You know, when I look on Facebook in the middle of the day and I see that you've liked a whole bunch of shit at 1.30 in the morning, maybe if you were sleeping, then you'd be able to get up. Early. And I'm not, but again, that's totally cool if that's what you want to do. But don't say, oh, I wish I could do that yeah. because you can. Totally. Yeah. And and it's just either they don't have the willpower or they don't have the right willpower. systems in simply, place. You know, it, it, when, when your desire to change becomes greater than your desire to stay the same, you change. It's not, you yeah. know, it's not rocket science. <clears throat> I think people just also lack an awareness. I don't think that they realize that that one at one thirty a.m. Facebook liking is actually. Like, I think that they think that that takes zero time. I totally, even yeah. though all I mean, these I, I have my biggest fear when I quit drinking a couple of years ago. My biggest fear was that um, I was going to uh, miss out on all the networking parties and things like that. And not only did I not do that, because anyone who really can make decisions, they're doing them at seven a.m. over egg whites and coffee at a local diner or at the plaza. Um, more importantly, my daughter goes to sleep at 8 o'clock. I'm asleep by 8.30. And in the two and a half, almost three years I've been doing this, I've missed nothing. My, my, my revenue has increased. My productivity has increased. My happiness has increased. My dopamine has definitely increased. You know, my daughter always knows when I'm not on the bike in the morning because I'll go to wake her up and be like, come on, honey, we have to get up. It's time for school. And she's like, daddy, you're not as happy. You need to ride your bike. You know, and it's like, kid's five years old. It's visible. And why wouldn't I want to be that? And so if that, oh, that means I don't get to go out and make anything to myself or drink or whatever, you know. And I was, when I quit drinking, I wasn't like getting drunk or doing stupid shit like that. I was just having, again, just like pizza. I don't have one drink. I have six, right? And then the next morning I wake okay. up and I don't feel that great. So I don't go to the gym. And then, well, I've already blown the morning. I might as well order a pizza. And the cycle just continues. I had a trainer once who told me that a cheat day can't last three weeks. And he has a point. <laughs> I mean, that's why I never tried <clears throat> drugs. I have such an addictive personality. I would have become a drug addict for I sure. I said if this I publicly. Even touched it. So I said this like, publicly in the newspaper. I'll say it here. I believe that on any given day, I am three bad decisions in a row away from being a junkie in the streets. And I've never had a drug problem. Thank God, knock on wood. But I have put, you know, when you're driving a faster brain, when you're driving a Lamborghini, you better know how to drive it. And you better have the ability to stop on a dime when shit comes up or whatever. You know, I, 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 I eliminate as much choice out of my life as possible to prevent doing stupid shit or to prevent things from happening. Um, my speaking, I, I speak all over the world. I'm a corporate keynote, like an A-level corporate keynote. And my speaking contract is like three paragraphs. I'll speak, you'll pay me, you'll pay my expenses. Except if I'm speaking in Vegas, then there's a rider that says, uh, speaker does not have to be on the ground from wheels down to wheels up for more than eight hours. And we'll only do a 12.30 p.m. keynote. So I'll, I'll do a lunchtime keynote, which means that I can take a 6 a.m. flight in, land at 10, do a 12.30 keynote, be on a 4 p.m. flight home, get home at 10. Um, because if I have to stay overnight one way or the other, that's me in Vegas unsupervised for 12 hours. Am I going to blow my kid's college fund? Probably not. But you know what? Let's not give myself the option to do stupid shit. Know thyself. Yeah, Shakespeare was right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's super important. And then also, back to the working out thing. I mean, apart from the cognitive benefit that it immediately gives you, um, where people just say, oh, I don't have time. But time is, time is not linear in my mind. You know, an hour after you've just done an hour Peloton and you've had your egg whites and your coffee is not the same as an hour at six o'clock and you haven't worked out, you know, what you can get done in that first hour is probably what you, what would uh, take you 12 hours. You know, if you uh, summed up those, you know, five to six o'clock when your no, brain's sure. tired, your brain is operating at different levels and you have to be aware of at what level your brain is operating well, at, under what conditions to, to schedule your time happy, around it. So you're making better choices. Right when your brain is full of dopamine, I'm sitting there. You know what? My daughter doesn't wake up for another 15 minutes. I'm gonna go bang out 15 emails right now. Da -da 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 done. As opposed to, well, she doesn't wake up 15 minutes. I'm just gonna sort of sit here and you know I'll watch like half an episode of King of the Hill. No, I, it's like you're so 
when I bring my laptop to the drop zone and when I finish a jump, I will literally sit down and plop out 10,000 words because I have, I'm so full of chemical right now. Yeah. And it took me a long time to, to, to kind of realize that, that actually an hour of my brain is not the same uh, depending on many different factors, right? And then another thing that took me way too long um, to figure out too is all this stuff, even if you don't buy into this, you know, your brain's not the same at, uh, under different conditions, it's, prevented, it's preventing you from an injury. It's preventing you from a lot of different things. You know, uh, I overworked at a younger age and, you know, the amount of wasted time in physical therapy or in pain or any of those things, if I would have just worked out for an hour a day, five days a week, you know, I would have, I would have saved literally thousands of hours. The first one is every once in a while, someone will leave shank mines. That's totally cool. You know, but I'll ask them, Hey, what's up? You know, why? Oh, you know, what? I love what you have. I just didn't have the time. Well, no, you didn't have the priority. Let's understand the difference because that's an insult to people who do make the time because they find it valuable. So you didn't have the priority. That's cool. The second point is exa to, to, to exactly to your point, um, you know, starting something today, uh, what's, what's the, what's the really bad Tumblr quote? I, I hate all those quotes, but they, some of them make a lot of sense. Um, to in 30 days, you'll wish you started today. Right. And mm -hmm. I mean, I just, I know how do I want to feel at 7 PM tonight? How do I want to feel at 8 PM tonight? That feeling that I want at 8 PM tonight starts at 4 AM this morning. And you just got to understand that. Uh, totally. Um, also, sorry, my, my computer was losing battery, so I had to just charge it. Um, also, what people don't realize, like, let's take your, your mastermind, for instance, right? They might not realize the immediate value. Oh, why? This is not directly applicable, right? But people are cutting you a check because they're basically, they're paying you for all of your previous knowledge, and they might not even realize how valuable that is today. <clears throat> but, you know, there might be a sentence in like the whole entire conference and that one sentence could completely change the way that they think they could be asking themselves even just one different question and by asking yourself one different question it can fundamentally change the whole way you 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 operate and think so i don't i think that i think that it's becoming more and more of a pop i think people are buying into these mass uh to the value of a mastermind you know especially high level ones like like yours now but when people when i hear the same thing um, you know, my response is, you know, if you just get one takeaway from it, it you could get a 10 X return. I, I actually on, have living proof of that. I was in a mastermind in Bangkok in 2014, 2013, 14, 13, 13. And I came and I heard one person suggest something to me. Well, why don't you, have you ever thought about doing it this way? And I can, I can literally trace $75,000 back to that one question. Like, like I can, I can draw you a map. That, you know, what, what did the whole event cost with travel? Five grand, right? You know, I can trace 75 grand back to that. And, and well, so that's the thing. It's like the New York event we're doing is deliberately on June 15th. It's deliberately designed for that. We have these round tables where, you know, you, we have keynotes and all that, but you also have like 21 minutes where you're sitting with um, eight people, all of whom are other entrepreneurs. And you have three minutes to talk about your company and then 19 or 18 minutes to get bombarded with questions, right? Which totally changed the way you think about it. Um, and again, my whole, my whole process in building these things was I didn't, want, I didn't want these things to be limited to the people who have sold you know, multi-million dollar companies. Because when I sold mine, <clears throat> I got all these offers to join. I'm like, where were you guys when I was having a shitty day and no one understood or couldn't have anyone to talk to? You know? Remind me, I actually have a code for your, uh, for your audience. The event's on uh, June, June 15th. And we're recording this on the mm -hmm. 24th anniversary of my graduating from Boston University. So if your members go to shankminds.com slash NYC which is the event on June 15th, if they use the code BU, I'll drop 150 bucks off the, the cost of the day for them. Awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna uh, get behind Sweet. that and Thank promote you. it as well because I, I, believe, I believe in what you're doing and also I'll be doing yeah. a round table there. So um, yeah, definitely, definitely go and check that out. What's, how is it structured? Is it, What's the difference between the way that you do Shank Mines? <clears throat> so Shank I mean, Mines is entirely digital. A little bit of it, but Shank Mines itself is digital. But in, in, in June, uh, how how is yep. what does the agenda look the, like? For the, the keynote day? is uh, the opening keynote for the day is being. It's uh, we have a hundred people that are going to attend. The opening keynote is being uh, given by the global head of corporate security for Bloomberg, who is a thirty-five year uh, Marine, who has since retired from the Marines, took this job, and he's going to talk about 
you know, essentially what I've been feeling is to talk about is the concept of continuing to go when you don't want to go anymore, which I just never get tired of hearing from anyone. Um, then we're opening mm -hmm. it up to 90 minutes of round table. So we'll get about four out of the eight people at the table, uh, get on, the, get them on the hot seat. Then I'm doing an hour of media training, um, which comes from my experience as journalist running a PR firm and running Harrow. I know what journalists look for, and I'm going to give everyone an hour of media training. <clears throat> Over the course of the day, we have a professional photographer who's going to be there who's going to shoot your headshots for free. That's going to be an added. Oh. That right there is like, yeah, that it's right there is right you know, there. Uh, the, the event is with, with the discount I gave you guys, it's like 549. Good luck getting headshots for under 549. Um, the afternoon, we have more roundtables. You're going to be doing a little bit. Um, I'm giving a keynote towards the end of the day, and then we're probably going to, everyone will head over to a bar for, um, They'll drink and I'll have a Diet Coke. It's going to be an amazing, it's, it's going to be a great day. We've, we've sold out every single one we've done. It's being held at uh, Convene on 52nd and 7th Avenue. It's, it's June 15th. It's Friday. It's going to be a great day. I'm excited for it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, everyone, come and check it out. Uh, I can't tell you enough how, how smart and brilliant Peter is. And I've never been to one of these, but I'm excited to, to check it out because I've, I'm, I'm familiar with your work and I completely... Um, respect the work that you're doing. And I'm sure that this is something completely incredible. And it's at a price point that is not like some of these other ones where it's like 25,000 and you, you get, you know, kind of, it's, it's more just like, I'm sure there's a big networking aspect as well to what you're doing, but it sounds to me like there's actually very practical feedback. Well, that's and the content, benefit. Everyone who joins, you know, gets access to, they can then join Shankmind's, uh, the digital group. And, you know, that's 150 people around the world. We got members in, we got the leading fashion photographer in Tokyo as a member, for God's sake. Right. You know, we have um, uh, uh, um, one of the top uh, uh, media strategists living in Dubai. Uh, in Dubai is out there. I mean, we just have so many amazing people who literally want to help. I mean, the whole premise of joining the group is you have to be able to, you have to be willing to give, give out as much as you get, if not more. Because at the end of the day, let's face it, people with opportunities, I'm sorry, people with resources tend to distribute opportunities to people they trust. So what other, um, before, before we wrap up, what other um, ideas in the back burner do you so, have I mean, right now? Faster than normal is pretty awesome. I really, you know, I'm seeing five-year-olds getting put on amphetamines because they're acting like, you know, they're five. And I just think that's wrong. I'm not, I'm not anti-medication, but I do believe that there is a middle ground and I don't believe it needs to be a first line of defense. So faster than normal is actually being turned into a documentary, uh, which is going to be really exciting. We're doing a Kickstarter for that in a couple of months. We have a phenomenal director on board, an award-winning uh, uh, director. So that's going to be great. <clears throat> um, the podcast, if any, if any of your members have ADHD, we'd love to have them on the podcast. The episodes are only 20 minutes long because, well, ADHD. So it should be, uh, you know, that's really great. And I'm just, I'm having fun. I'm, like I said, having a blast. And the documentary, uh, where is that? Is that going to be that's, like a Netflix that's probably documentary? The goal. Or? Yeah, I wouldn't mind submitting it. You know, again, I just want to get it out there. And I, I, every time I talk to kids at schools or elementary schools or talk to parents, or whatever, and I'm like, you know, I meet these kids who have been, they're like 12 years old. And they've been told since they're four years old, they're broken. There's something wrong with them. They, they need to be fixed. And I'm like, dude, dude, you know, you fucking don't. You're awesome. Your brain is so much faster. You have to just learn to drive it. And, and you know, I just, I want to keep taking that message. Because like I said, when I was a kid, it didn't exist. It would sit down. You disrupt in the class disease. In my childhood, I, mean, I had great parents. I love my parents. But my school days really sucked. I got my ass kicked on a, on a, on a daily basis. And, you know, if I had known how to shut up, I probably wouldn't have. And I just want to tell that story a little bit and, and, and get kids to realize that they're not broken, they're gifted. I don't know what, what you think about this, but I found that the biggest um, like antidote to my ADD isn't, isn't Adderall or anything like that, but it's um, creating systems and having proper systems in place because your brain is working super fast. You have ideas. If you don't have a place <clears throat> to capture those ideas, um, you know, then it becomes stressful. So that's why I've, I've kind of dedicated a lot of my energy and time to, optimizing systems and tools and how, you know, kind of how to yeah. play hot potato so that you're never, you, you know, you, the, the, the wheels can be spinning super fast, but as long as I have places to be putting things really quickly, it's, I it's fine. I devote two chapters in the, in the book, Faster Than Normal, just to my systems and rules that I put into place. You know, I have a, I have a, a closet with two sides to it. And, and one side says uh, office slash travel and it's t-shirt and jeans. The other side says speaking slash TV and it's button down shirt, jacket and jeans. And that's it. My suits, my, my, my high holiday stuff, my shoes, my vest. Those are all in, in my daughter's room in her closet. Because if I had to look every morning, you know, what should I wear? Hmm, that sweater. I remember that sweater. Laura gave me that sweater. I wonder how she's, you know, it's three hours later. I'm naked in the living room on Facebook. I haven't left the house. So, you know, <laughs> you put these rules into place. There's an image that you're not going to get out of your head. But you, know, you put these rules into place and they work. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I, I just want to sit with you for a day and just like know all of these like hacks that you have, like, you know, the Tokyo back and forth to write a book, the closet. Like, can you just give us one more and then we'll call it a day? Cause I know that uh, it's probably maxing out the attention. Back when right Gawker now. was a thing, back when they were still alive, um, they got wind of the fact that I get up super early and they actually wrote a piece. Uh, Peter Shankman is apparently a farmer and um, you know, it's, it's nice to see that they're dead now and I'm still alive, but um the getting up early thing, I, I can't stress enough. Just try 30 minutes early, right? Force yourself to get up 30 minutes earlier a day. And the, the less you have to lay out, the less ideas you have to think about, the less decisions you have to make during your day, the more you can be productive, right? You know, the whole mm -hmm. reason I wear over the same thing every day or I wear a T-shirt and a button, I don't have to think about it, right? I don't want to sit there for 20 minutes to figure out what to wear. I know that's 20 minutes to be doing something else. Um, I eat very similar foods. I, I, I cook on Sundays, right? I put the stuff in the fridge. When I'm not intermittent fasting, I'm eating and I'm eating healthy because, you know, I deleted Seamless off my phone. It was too easy. Little things mm -hmm. like that. Decision fatigue is a, a, is a serious yeah. thing. So where can, where can people find out more so about So I am you? at Peter Shankman on all the socials. Um, my email is peter at shankman.com. The mastermind is shankminds.com. The event is shankminds.com slash NYC. And fasterthannormal.com is the podcast and book. If you enjoyed this week's episode, visit podcast.getleverage.com to download our free podcast cheat sheet outlining Peter Shankman's five faster than normal productivity hacks. Thanks for listening to the Leverage Podcast. Leverage is a premier outsourcing platform that gives you access to a team of skilled professionals who can complete any task or project for life and business. Our goal is to help people be their most efficient and productive selves. Focus on your unique ability. Let us do the rest. Get leverage.